Praise the Lord, friends. I am so glad that you are with us today. I'm here with my son, Aaron. We are gonna be teaching on Paul's prayer from Ephesians chapter three. And when you get a revelation of the love of God, it will completely change the way that you pray. It'll also change the way that you think. You'll begin to take the limits off of God and you'll begin to live in a brand new reality, seeing the glory and the grace of God. Open your heart and receive the word. Praise the Lord, friends. I am so glad that you're with us today. I have Aaron with me today, and we're sharing from Ephesians chapter 3, mm -hmm. verse 14 to verse 21. We'll be talking about Paul's prayer in Ephesians chapter 3. It is a powerful prayer, and I love these prayers of Paul. You know, so many people in the church mm -hmm. are still praying these Old Testament prayers. Oh, God, ran the heavens and come down. <laughs> it's just like, no, Jesus already came from heaven. He came to earth. He lived. He already, you know, went down and conquered the devil and rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. And now we pray in light of what's been done. What people believe, you know, their theology is really re revealed in their prayers. You know, when I, when I was um, going to school, I went to secular universities for, for music. So when I was at these universities, I try to connect with other Christians on campus because, you know, Christians were kind of a minority um, in, in a lot of colleges today. So I try to connect with different Christian organizations and Bible studies, but uh, I would tend to avoid uh, big uh, prayer gatherings just because, and just people just have the, the wonkiest type of prayers, and you really see that they're just begging, they, they're confessing, you know, I'm a sinner, oh, oh God, just, you know, it's it's very, very like, Old Testament. Yeah, Old Testament kind of prayers, and they don't really have this revelation of who they are in Christ Jesus. So because Paul has that revelation of who he is in Christ Jesus, it changes the way he prays. Amen. And so Paul in his prayers, Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, Philippians 1, Colossians 1, he never talks about lack. Mm -hmm. He never talks about weakness. Mm -hmm. He never talks about I'm so poor, and, you know, he never talks about need. He talks he, about... He went through through trials, like more trials than any, the, you know, his light afflictions, he calls <laughs> yeah. them, are much more than, than when you the read about them in face. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, they were crazy. So it's not that he just had this cakewalk kind of life where, you know, he, he had a pretty tough life. You know, I, I think he probably had a few scars, a few, you know, he, I think he said he'd been beaten and left for dead a few times and yeah. 39 stripes. He received five, three times. Three like times. I think three times he was shipwrecked. He was in the de in the, you know, deep in the ocean. For yeah, a and um, oh. but even though even though he went through all these trials, and th those trials weren't from God, they were just from him, just going out and preaching the the gospel in a very adverse world. Yeah. Uh, but God still, you know, he, he says even though I'm going through these you know tribulations, it's for your glory. So he's like, God's going to turn it around for your glory, but. Because he knew that God was going to take care of him and, and all these trials, these things weren't from God, he was able to pray powerful prayers. Yeah, and even, you know, in the book of Acts, there was a prophet named Agabus that took his gar girdle and said, at, you know, when at Rome, this person is going to be very, you know, much persecuted. And Paul said, I'm bound in the spirit to go there, mm -hmm. you know. He says, neither count I my life dear to myself that I might finish my course with joy. None of these things move me. In other words, I'm not moved by these outward things. I'm moving by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Praise God. I'm going where God wants me to go, go and doing what God wants me to do. Mm -hmm. But his prayers, he does not pray from this sick, weak, poor position. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he ends up his life in his own hired house and receiving all that came to him. And mm -hmm. so he was blessed. Praise mm -hmm. God. Let's go to uh, Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3, beginning in verse 14. He says, for this cause, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Man, God is our Father, and we're in his family. That changes everything. Mm -hmm. And I love, I love that Jesus revealed the name of God as Father. You know? Yeah. 
Um, what, what an awesome revelation that we receive from Jesus that he is God our Father. Now we're adopted as sons and daughters. We're children of God, part of the family. So I love that he prays to the Father. Yes. You know, when Jesus taught his disciples, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. And when they saw him pray, his prayers motivated them Mm -hmm. to want to pray. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, he doesn't pray like the Pharisees, Sadducees. Mm -hmm. You know, something is different about him Mm -hmm. because he prays out of a relationship. Our Father, which are even even um, you know, Paul Paul's background as a Pharisee. He, you know, Pharisees were very offended that Jesus would call God Father. Right. And um, here, I just love that he has a revelation himself now, that this is our father. Amen. God is my father, and I'm in his family. Mm -hmm. That changes everything. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Because God is my father, I have everything I need Mm -hmm. to do everything God called me to do. I have no lack in any area of my life. Mm -hmm. I am blessed and highly favored of the Lord. And I just love that, Paul. You know, even though, man, he he had had some stuff to, to get over, you know, having been there and witnessed and approved of the martyr martyring of Stephen and killing other Christians. You know, he, he had to get over some things and and to just be able to come to God and and come boldly before his throne and, and call him father. That's a very beautiful thing. And you know, Paul has a revelation when he says there's no condemnation Mm -hmm. to those who are in Christ Jesus. And it's because it's a spiritual God, God, and, and Paul talks about this, how God places that spirit of adoption in us, whereby we cry, Abba, father. Amen. So he, he knew that deep within his spirit that he is a son of God and, and he can... A child of God. Well, yeah. that, that changes everything. Mm-hmm. Now, what's he pray? He says, I pray that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might mm-hmm. or with the ability of God mm-hmm. by his spirit in the inward man. Mm-hmm. I want you to be strong in the spirit. Mm-hmm. I want you to realize what you've been given in the spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, so many people don't realize what we've been given, mm-hmm. you know, in the spirit. In the inner man. In the inward man. We have all things that pertain to life and godliness through the, our relationship with Jesus who called us to glory and virtue. Mm-hmm. Uh, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. So I want you to realize what you've been given in the realm of the spirit. I like a, you know, there's a book that I think I still have it. You, you loaned it to me over a dozen years ago called The Hidden Man of the Heart. Amen. And I think it's a book that really, you know. It's by E.W. Kenyon. I read that book as a teenager, and that book really gave me an understanding and a revelation of the realm of the spirit Mm -hmm. and who you are in the spirit. If you get a revelation of who you are in the spirit, it will change your life Mm -hmm. as a believer. You're righteous, redeemed, sanctified, wise, justified, amen, in the realm of the spirit. The inner man or the hidden man. Praise God, you can do all things. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. You're victorious in the realm of the spirit. And the might through his spirit. And you know, really, these first three chapters of Ephesians, Paul's talking about who we are and what we have in the spirit. Mm -hmm. He's talking about that we're seated, Ephesians 2 verse 6, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. We have, we're, we're taking up residence mm-hmm. in Christ, mm-hmm. and Christ now is living in us. Mm-hmm. And that's what he, he talks to them about, that, you know, Christ is in us. We have his spirit in the inner man. And, and then he says in verse 17 that Christ may dwell, mm-hmm. may take up residence in your heart by faith. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Christ has taken up residence in you. Mm-hmm. The anointed one is in you. Mm-hmm. Praise God. You're in him and he's in you. That changes everything. Praise God. And so, you know, we need to know that Jesus has taken up residence on the inside of me. Mm -hmm. Praise God. I'm not some defeated worm. I'm not some sick, sorry, pathetic, weak, poor, Mm -hmm. defeated person. Mm -hmm. Christ has taken up residence in me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. The Apostle John Mm -hmm. writes that, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. He says, who is he that overcomes the world, but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God, 1 mm-hmm. John chapter 5. Amen. Glory yeah, to God. yeah, when you pray, don't pray like you're a worm. Oh, no, what a, that's just not that's, the way to pray. Yeah, that, that's, th- those things are just really. And there, there is, Old Testament scripture says, I am a worm and no man, but that's not talking about us. Mm-hmm. And I've seen people in the church preach that kind of garbage. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've seen some awful things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But glory to God, we've been delivered 
from that kind of living and that kind of thinking. And he says that Christ may take up residence, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. Mm -hmm. It's by faith. I want you to get a revelation by faith mm -hmm. of who's living on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. Realize this, the, the undefeated champion of the universe has taken up residence on the inside of you. And you're in him. When you understand that, it changes the way you live your life. Mm -hmm. It changes the way you pray. You can't pray these sick, poor, begging prayers anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, is that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. I love that. You know, it, faith works by love. Yes. That's how you get rooted and grounded in Christ is just by understanding how much God loves you. Amen. And that's exactly what that's talking about. Mm -hmm. Galatians 5 verse 6 says, In Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith which works by love. Mm -hmm. And that's not talking about our love for one another. In the context, that's talking about when you get a revelation of the love of God for you. And, and God's love for you is consistent. He doesn't, you know, love you one day and hate you the next day. That's why you can be rooted and grounded in it because God's love for you, it's always the same. You know, the Bible says that the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost that's given to us. That's in Romans chapter 5 and verse 5. And, you know, when Paul's talking about that, he says in Romans 5 verse 1, being justified by faith, we're at peace with God, right? Mm -hmm. We talked about that early. We're at harmony with God through Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, we're at peace with God uh, through Jesus. And he goes on to say... Uh, in Romans 5, verse 2, there, he says, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he goes on, and, and in Romans, I'm just going to have to turn there and read this because I want to get this point across. And I think you're going to have some things to say about this. By whom, he says, by Jesus, in verse 2, we have access by faith into grace where we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So by Jesus, we have access into grace. Mm -hmm. And we stand by faith in grace, not saying what we did, but saying what he did. Mm -hmm. And we rejoice in the hope of, of the glory of God, the manifested presence, power, and purpose of God. Mm -hmm. But he says, we're not only looking for good things to happen, but he says, in verse 3, not only so, we glory in tribulation when trouble comes. Mm -hmm. And we touched on that a little bit yesterday, that Paul had a lot of trouble, a lot mm -hmm. of difficulty and problems. And, and yet, he says, knowing that tribulation works patient. If you'll be patient when there's trouble and keep believing the gospel mm -hmm. and keep believing Jesus, you will experience the faithfulness of God. Patience works experience and experience works hope. Imitate those who through faith and patience. Inherit the promises. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And he says, and hope makes not a shame. So this is the way I read this. We're believing for good, but even when trouble comes when we're believing for good, if we will patiently believe God, then we will experience the faithfulness of God, mm -hmm. right? That will give us hope. Mm -hmm. Because I patiently believe God and experience the faith, faithfulness of God. When trouble comes, I still have hope. Mm -hmm. Because I know that God is good mm -hmm. and I know that he loves me. Boy, there's some things that people need to get down in their heart. And that is that God is not your problem. God is your answer. You know, there's a psalm that says, I would have fainted unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 27, 13 and 14. Yeah. talks about that. So we need to keep believing in the goodness of God and know that God's good. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what? There's these people that think that God's doing terrible things to you to teach you. That is not the truth. Mm -hmm. You know what? You might put yourself in a stupid place by opening the door to the devil, mm -hmm. but God is not the author of evil and destruction and death. You might just Dude. be facing tribulation because you're kicking against the devil's pricks. Yeah. That's what Paul was doing. He Paul was, was, yeah, going after it. Yeah. Man, and so he goes on and he says that Christ may take up residence in your heart by faith, that you get an established in love, may able to comprehend or understand with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And I like verse 19. He's talking about getting a revelation of the greatness of God's love. He says, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. And we're going to come back right after this break, because that seems like an oxymoron statement. And we're going to see what Paul was talking about when he says, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. We'll be right back. Friends, I'm Pastor Lawson Purdue, and I've been teaching Destined to Win from the book of Ephesians. This is one of the greatest teachings 
that I've ever done. I've had more requests for this teaching than almost any teaching we've done. I've got it in eight parts as I taught it in church, in CD form, also in a USB, and then I also have the teaching in 16 parts as we've taught it on television with my son, Dr. Aaron Perdue. And in this 16 part teaching, I am just thrilled with all the different things that was brought in. So you can get the eight part CDs or the USB that has all the video and audio, or you can get the 16 part as taught on television. Call us and let us know what you'd like to have. We have a special offer today and we're so blessed to have you. Check out our website, CarisChristianCenter.com. We have this and many other materials and we have all of these things online for free. Blessings. Friends, we're back. Thanks so much for staying tuned. We're here in Ephesians chapter three where Paul's praying. What a powerful prayer. And he prays and, and he says, I'm praying first of all that, you know, that God is our father and we're in his family, that you'd get strong in the spirit, that Christ would take up residence in your faith. But then he begins to pray in verse 18 and 19 that you would get a revelation of the love of Christ. And when he says to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge, what's he saying? It's just, uh, he's talking about experiencing the love of Christ, which is, right. it passes your intellectual capacity to, to really understand. In, in the Greek, it says something like this, to come to know the love of Christ, which mm -hmm. passes intellectual knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's not book learning. Mm -hmm. You're not just learning about Jesus. You come to know him and you experience his love that you might be filled with the fullness of God. Mm -hmm. If you'll get a revelation of the love of God, there's so many people in the church that have absolutely no revelation of the love of God. Mm -hmm. We've even seen some people that preach Christ for a while and said, oh, I didn't preach this. And now I got, and they have no revelation of the love of God mm -hmm. or they wouldn't be preaching these terrible things they're preaching that mm -hmm. are unscriptural mm -hmm. and not New Testament, period. Mm -hmm. And he just says this, um, you need to get a revelation of this. You need to come to know it. You need to understand it that you might get full of God. Mm. You know, when you get a revelation of the love of God, hope makes not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So Paul says, you know what? We're standing in grace, believing for good, but even if evil comes, you know what we're going to do? We're going to patiently believe God. We're going to experience the faithfulness of God. We're going to, we're going to, and when we do that, it's going to create hope in us. Mm -hmm. So when bad comes, we can keep believing mm -hmm. and patiently. And, and we know that God loves us and we know that God's good. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I used to have this friend. He was from a denominational church and he was actually spirit filled undercover. But, you know, anytime I would have a problem, it's when I pastor in Eastern Colorado. And he's a pastor from one of the next towns. He would say, well, God just doesn't want you in the cattle business. Well, you know, that's why he was so poor and defeated because anytime trouble comes, he said, well, just throw up my hands. God didn't want me to do that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there could be lots of times you're doing the will of God and you have some problems. Mm -hmm. um, Paul had some problems when he's doing the will of God. You brought that out today, Aaron. Mm -hmm. But I didn't just throw up my hands. I kept believing God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one, one year we had a terrible blizzard. And I lost $100,000. And, you know, I just believed God. And within a year, I made that 100000 back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then a few years later, we'd moved to Colorado Springs. I'd bought many more cattle. I had over 3,000 cattle. I had about $3 million borrowed between the bank and the feedlots, all the money out of them on feed and different things. And we had the worst blizzard in 100 years. They didn't have a storm on record this bad in southeast Colorado. And I had 2,500 cattle in Lamar, Colorado mm -hmm. and around there. And you know what? I just kept believing God. I lost about a quarter million dollars. It was a miracle that I didn't go broke. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was doing everything I need to do when that storm was coming in. I was telling it to stop. I was, you know, commanding it. And you know, it just kept coming. Mm -hmm. And people said, well, man, you miss God. Well, maybe I miss God. But you know what happened when I lost a quarter million? I said, you know what? When I lost 100,000, I believe God and God restored it. And I'm going to believe God now. And I believe God not only to, to restore the quarter million, I'm going to believe I get it back seven times. Mm -hmm. Because if a thief be found, he's got to repay seven times. And I know the devil is a thief. I know that God did not steal that from me. Mm -hmm. I knew that God was not the author of my problem. I knew it wasn't God putting me through a fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. That kind of preaching is... Yeah, this is... I have a word for, for people watching this right now. But whatever you've been through or currently going through... I know that 100% of the time, you are always better off trusting God than not. 
Amen. You are always 100, every single person watching this right now, I can say with 100% confidence that you need to put all of your trust in God. You need to put all of your trust in his promises. You need to put all of your trust in his word. God is always faithful. And I know that you are always, always, always better off trusting God than not. Amen. So you know what? When I lost that quarter million, I just believed God. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I laid on my couch and prayed, and God told me, look at what you have and not what you lost. And I thank God for you and your brothers. Thank mm -hmm. God for Mama. Thank God for the church. Mm -hmm. Thank God for every good thing. And you know what? I didn't just get that quarter million back. I got it back seven times. God, God is a restorer. He loves to restore people. He loves to... God, God is in the restoration business. So God is a good God, and He yeah. wants to help you. But you got to keep believing it. And he restores things far much better than you could even imagine. Oh, it is so much better. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. I, I wouldn't even want to go think about going back to where I was. Mm -hmm. And so he says, listen, I want you to come to experience the love of Christ that passes knowledge. When you're, when you're having good things, thank God for the love of God. Mm -hmm. When you're having trouble, thank God for the love of God. Mm -hmm. Remember that God still loves you, that God's not mad at you, that God's not the author of your trouble, that God's always good mm -hmm. and only good. And he says that you might be filled with fullness of God. And you know what? When you'll do that, it, you'll just get filled with the presence of God. Mm -hmm. I had a businessman heard about that several years later, and he came to see me, and I was teaching in Karis Bible College when that has happened. He said, that's interesting because I was in your class when those things were going on. And he said, you had a smile on your face. You never mentioned it one time. And here I heard about it years later. And how could you be so happy? Mm -hmm. I said, because listen, God told me to look at what I had, not what I lost. Because mm -hmm. I put my hope in God. Just mm -hmm. like you're saying there, mm -hmm. keep your trust in God. Keep your hope in God. Don't go back. And he says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above. He's done some things for me like that. Mm -hmm. And you know what? He's no respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. He'll do it for you exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think according to the power mm -hmm. that's working in us. This, the special, wonderful, miracle working mm -hmm. power, the power of God that's working in us. Mm -hmm. So what power do we have working in us, Aaron? We have the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you. Amen. We have the Holy Spirit. In resurrection us. We, power. We got resurrection power, the resurrection life of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We've we've got the the ability of the Holy Spirit. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes on you. Mm -hmm. We've got the power of the Word of God. We've been born again by the incorruptible seed of the Word of God. Seed has ability in it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I like I like that earlier in um, Ephesians when Paul was talking about that we were created for good works. You know, Jesus said, "These same works you shall do, and greater works yeah, you shall do also." John fourteen. 12. So we're created to to do the works of Jesus and even greater works. Yeah. So he says he's able to do exceedingly. That fits right in with this. Mm -hmm. uh, John fourteen twelve, abundantly above all that we can ask or even think. Now I can ask for some big things. Mm -hmm. I can think some big things. Mm -hmm. But he's a, and sometimes people aren't thinking big enough, most of the time. But then when God shows up and exceeds it, you know it had to be him. It just wasn't yeah. your plans and your purposes and your ability. No, but according to the power, what power is working in us? Resurrection power. Yeah, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Word of God. But in context, mm -hmm. the power of the love of God. There's power mm -hmm. in the love of God. Mm -hmm. Man, two of the most powerful ministers that I ever met, Bobby Jean Merck. Mm -hmm. And there, there was a man that came and ministered at our church years ago, and when he got in the pulpit, he just shined with the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And you could see the love of God all over him. Mm -hmm. Man, there is power in love. Mm -hmm. and Bobby Jean operated in a lot of power. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You could see the love of God and mm -hmm. the power of God in her. I want to be like that. Praise God, I believe we are. And so he says, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according. You know, a lot of times people get mad at somebody else. Mm -hmm. And, and the scripture actually says this in Romans, I think it's chapter 3, verse 4, but it says, Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without mm -hmm. effect? And no, their unbelief can't make the faith of God. And somebody else's, you know. Mm -hmm. And how, yeah. how people have wronged you or hurt you, that doesn't stop God's goodness towards you. Either. God's power or them saying something wrong or whatever. You, it's, you need to be the one that believes. Mm -hmm. You need to be the one. And don't get mad at other people that are mm -hmm. just trying to help. Mm -hmm. And so he says, according to the power that works in us, we got the power of the Spirit of God, the power of the Word of God, and the power of the love of God on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. 
And we need to get a revelation of what's in us in Christ. Mm -hmm. Now he says this in verse 21, unto him be glory in the church, unto God be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages of the world without end, amen. Mm -hmm. Let's live for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Man, when you begin to understand who you are and what you have in Christ, when you begin to get a revelation of that, and that's what Paul talks about all through Ephesians 1, 2, and 3. Mm. And then you begin to pray in light of what Jesus has done. It changes the way that you pray, mm -hmm. and it changes the way that you receive. Praise God. Mm -hmm. You know what? You and your brothers are receiving good things mm -hmm. in your life. And all of your believers, all of your givers, mm -hmm. but you, don't have, you know that God is for you. Mm -hmm. You know that God is good. And you don't have a lot of religion to unlearn. Mm -hmm. And so when you begin to pray this way, it will change the way that you pray. Praise God. Yeah, when, when you know that God loves you too and how much Jesus loves you and cares about you and has good plans for you, that really takes the limits off as well. You know, um, several years ago, I, I um, came back uh, for a break and I was playing a concert here in Colorado. One of my former teachers, this, this um, woman taught me um, from fourth grade through eighth grade, um, she just came and talked to me, and, and she had seen what had been happening in my life, my brother's lives, and she said, you know what was different about you guys is that you grew up um, just thinking that there, there weren't any limits. Amen. Even though we grew up in a small town, a town of 300 people, where there wasn't necessarily a whole lot of opportunities for music or sports, or um, she just said, you, you grew up just with this Amen. mentality that there, there aren't any limits. Praise God. We need to take the limits off God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Man, I'm thinking big. I'm believing, you know, I'm believing God for more than I've ever believed Him for in my life. Praise the Lord. Thanks for tuning in. If you need prayer, if you need product, if you want to become a partner, just give us a call today. We'll be happy to receive your call. God bless you and we love you. Bless you. Do you know your true position in Christ Jesus? You have been saved, raised up, and seated in heavenly places with Him. You can stand against any attack of the enemy from a position of victory. You are destined to win. You can get the eight-part live teaching on CD for $48 or on USB for $35 or get the 16-part as seen on TV USB for $59 when you call 719-418-4000 or visit karischristiancenter.com. Hi ladies, I am so excited to invite you to our Rejoice Women's Conference February 9th through the 11th. This is an event for women 13 and up. It's time to rejoice. Not only are you gonna have a lot of fun and laugh a lot, you are also gonna experience the power of God when you see signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen, we're gonna have a lot of fun. We have Kathy Duplantis coming, so make plans and register today. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast has been made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Or to partner online, go to charischristiancenter.com slash give. You can write us at P.O. Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.